This is the coolest deep learning machine that I have ever had the opportunity to use. It's the most power in the smallest form factor also that I've ever used. And finally, it also runs the coolest temperatures that I've ever used. It's the Camino Grando RM V2S. It's capable of running upright like you see here as a workstation or on its side in a standard rack mounting solution. It's a clear competitor to the NVIDIA DGX Station A100, and with a look inside, we can begin to see how and why. This machine is engineered by a company called Camino that makes everything from a tiny water cooling gaming rig called Auto for a couple thousand dollars, all the way up to mobile data centers inside of shipping containers. Inside this particular Grando RM V2 short build, there are four A100 40GB PCIe cards, each of which are water-cooled. We also have an AMD Ryzen 3995 WX water-cooled CPU, as well as a massive radiator to cool these parts, and we can also see the fans for the three 750-watt power supplies, and everything exhausts out the rear, where you might also spot a temperature sensor. This is for measuring the output air temperatures. The motherboard is an Asus Pro WRX 80E Sage with 512 gigabytes of RDIMM server grade memory. Onto the front, we have a view window to our water pump, along with the LCD display showing various machine stats, like the input and output air temperatures, as well as another temperature sensor near the Camino logo for that intake air temperature. Speaking of temperatures, at Full 100% GPU util for all four A100s, we see max temps at 68 degrees Celsius, which is just that one, literally physically, the top GPU, uh, and then lower 60 degrees Celsius for the rest. Uh, this test ran for about two and a half hours, and honestly, I'm just astonished at these, these results. That's it's actually 10 degrees Celsius cooler than the DGX station's A100s, which were cooled with refrigerant. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty crazy. Now these are different cards, different machines, and because of their different cards, they're in theory different TDPs. So the DGX station had the A100 SXM cards, and the 80 gigabyte, 80 gigabyte SXM card has a 400 watt TDP. And so in theory, that would be a hotter card just because of the wattage. But um, what I found on that DGX station is that the cards seemed to run at with more like a 250 watt TDP. My guess is they clocked this down because that entire DGX station ran off a single plug. So to do that, uh, you've got to down something. <laughs> so if you have four 400 watt uh, GPUs, that means you are already exceeding the 1500 watt maximum of a single outlet, which also means you've got nothing for to actually run the refrigerant um, to run your CPU, all that stuff. So anyway, um, I, I think it's a fair comparison for the cooling. And uh, I got to be honest, I'm really impressed. I just I, I think that's the biggest takeaway for me with these Camino machines is the custom water cooling. Um, the, the engineering here is so well done. If you're wondering how the Camino sounds while it's running, this is how it sounds. It's gonna get a little louder when I take the side panel off. But what I wanna talk about is the actual cooling on the Camino. So the way the Camino is built is the intake of air is through the front, but the, um, the only actual fans that dictate that that's an intake are these three fans right here. Now, when the side panel's on, that means that because those fans are blowing air this way, it's going to suck air from the front. Then, Basically, when the panel's on, the path of least resistance is going to be through the radiator, effectively, hopefully, cooling the water and cooling the GPUs. But what I found interesting was when I was doing the thermal images, I, I basically I run the benchmark, wait till temperatures level out, I take off the side panel and take thermal images as quickly as possible just to get as close to how they were. Um, and what I noticed, though, was that since the benchmark was still running, the temperatures of the GPUs actually dropped by like one to two degrees. And then I was like, well, well, maybe it's just because I took the side panel off. And you might think, well, obviously it's because you took the side panel off. But the only thing cooling these GPUs is the water cooling. So with the side panel off, you could probably even hear it. The microphone's like right here in front of where this air is blowing. I can feel it. It's cool air. It's not even hot air. So the air from these fans is just kind of coming off the radiator right into me. And it's, it, it's not hot air. <laughs> so, so if I put my hand behind the machine, I can feel there's like hot air, but there's no air pressure coming from it. 
So it's almost like the radiator is just like one giant heat sink. <laughs> and like air is not actually blowing through it. Um, but comically enough, that seems to actually be more efficient than when the side panel is on. Now there are other things that need to be cooled and are probably depending on air passing over them. So like on the, on the motherboard, like the RAM and sometimes the VRM, although in this case that motherboard seems to have like a little, v, like a little fan and heat sink. So I think that's probably fine. Um, since it was designed to have the side panel on, I'll put the panel back on. But um, I just thought that was really interesting <laughs> that the, um, the radiator doesn't appear to need air, at least in large volume, to be passing through it. <laughs> and then somehow it's actually cooler with the side panel off, and this is just a, I guess, a heat sink. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, pretty interesting. Okay, so it runs cool, but how does it perform? Well, this is not the first time that we've talked about the glory of the A100 GPU on this channel. It is indeed the fastest GPU available right now. Now first, looking at the relative time chart here, what we're looking at is how quickly can the same GPU or group of GPUs run through the same tasks, so same model size, same data set size, all that. So in this case, the lower, the better. So the lower just means it's run through that task faster. And so the X axis here is in seconds. So what we can see is the A100 is 5.6 times faster than the 1080 Ti, it's 3.4 times faster than the RTX 8000, about 2.2 times faster than the RTX 3090. So yes, it's fast. One curious result that I found was when I ran the same benchmark on the Camino that I had used to benchmark the DGX station. So now we're looking at a tensor board of that benchmark, and we're comparing how quickly these A100 cards stepped over the same amount of data in the form of how many steps per second can that GPU do, where each step is a, is a batch. So in this case, higher is better. It means you're stepping quicker. Here, we can see that the 40 gigabyte PCIe card in the Camino appears to be 12% faster than the SXM A100 in the DGX station. And that was an SXM A100 80 gigabyte card. In theory, it should be if anything, a little quicker. I wish I had a DGX station lying around to do further tests, but for now, it's just something quite curious. I, my best guess is it relates to the sort of downclocking uh, that the SXM cards were put through so everything could run on that single outlet. One final way to compare the NVIDIA DGX stations to this Comino machine is through NVLink. I never personally paid much attention to NVLink, but I have found that sometimes it can make a massive, surprising difference, specifically with large language model tasks. One of these days, I plan to dig more into NVLink specifically because sometimes it doesn't matter much or it's very marginal, and then sometimes it really matters. Like, we're talking double the performance. But also, not all NVLinks are the same, with hugely varying bandwidths. So for example, with the Convnet benchmark, the addition of NVLink does improve things. It's about a 23 to 24% improvement, but I'd still say this is fairly marginal. And again, this is with a single Convnet that's being trained with batches just across multiple GPUs, but it's the same model that we're training, we're just using multiple GPUs to do that. And again, just like before with this relative time chart, the lower the bar in this case, the better, because that means it went faster through the process. Now, what if we look at using transformer models where we want to train, again, the same large language model across multiple GPUs. So one model, multiple GPUs. This is where the DGX station can basically double the performance of the Camino. And to be clear, the Convnet model that I just showed you, that was also one Convnet across multiple GPUs. It's just it was a Convnet. But now we're looking at a transformer model. And we're back to the tensor board, so in this case, the higher the better, because this is how many steps per second is the machine taking. So in this case, what we're looking at is the Puget machine with two RTX 3090s. One example is without the NVLink, and one example is with the NVLink. And here you can see the NVLink is making a massive, massive difference. Uh, almost twice as fast just by throwing in the NVLink. So this is why the DGX station, if you're trying to train large language models, transformers, uh, it might make more sense to get something that is with those SXM cards on the HGX boards because all four of those cards are NV linked. Whereas on the Camino with the PCIe A100 cards, you can only two-way 
NV link. You can't actually do a three-way or four-way NV link, so it can only be in pairs. Now, at least for me personally, I more often than not find myself trying to train many models per GPU rather than multiple GPUs per model, simply because you never really know what model you're going to use out of the gate. So there's always just a bunch of trial and error where you're testing many different model types. So for the R&D process, I think um, it's kind of a wash. But for sure, when I was trying to train, for example, GPT Medium on Python code, for example, using that DGX station was really nice. And I really did need to use all four of those uh, A100 GPUs. So it is something that you want to keep in mind. The form factor of the Camino is also pretty impressive. On the right, I have an air-cooled box machine with two RTX 8000s, and on the left, I've got an air-cooled Puget with the two RTX 3090s. The Camino is basically the size of the box, just a little bit longer, which makes sense, they're both rack-mountable, and the Puget is an ATX XL size, and it honestly just looks like a giant next to the Camino. But the Camino is more powerful than the Puget and the box put together. Also, the DGX station was a ATX XL size, so this tiny form factor for the 4X A100 build from Camino uh, really is impressive, especially given the temperatures that it runs at. So I think for me, the trait that I find most impressive here is just Camino's ability to pack an abundance of performance into a relatively tiny form factor. And the reason that they can do this is because of the water cooling and honestly being willing to sort of rethink case design and engineering because this casing supports all the way up to EATX motherboards as big as they get, but it still has this pretty small form factor. It's such a unique build and at least for me personally, I love the design. I just love the way this unit looks. Very often, we and I build computers and slap on some RGB RAM or fans or something like that to make it look cool, but Camino has just engineered cool here. There is just something about this machine that I, I just love it. On the topic of cool, I also recently moved my operations to a far more uh, and better air-conditioned area, uh, so no longer am I breaking a sweat when the machines are running. And the running temperatures of the Camino under load are even better uh, in the 50s. <laughs> again, that's at full load. Um, again, I would love to see what the DGX station runs in this same space, but such is life. I don't have one lying around. So <laughs> the price of this specific build comes in at a pretty significant $72,000, most of which is just the price of the A100 GPUs. This is something like forty-five dollars to $50,000 just in... GPUs. And that CPU is about $6,000. The RDIM RAM is also a pretty penny. Um, this build is meant to be compared to something like the $100,000 4X A100 40 gigabyte DGX station. Uh, and I think it compares pretty well. <laughs> You could definitely get a Camino Grando RM short build for a fraction of this cost by simply going with different GPUs and CPU, or of course you could go bigger with six GPUs or even a shipping container data center. <laughs> um, I'm also curious about things like auto, just other completely custom and unique water-cooled small design, or at least relatively tiny designs uh, for gaming and data science and all that. And just in general, I'm excited to see what else this company comes up with over time. And I'm honored to have had the time to spend with the Camino. I do have to, unfortunately, send it back eventually, but Daniel and I do have some plans for it first. Stay tuned.